Let me tell you something you already know. I'm Dave Kirloff, and I'm going to talk about hitting. I'm going to give you an idea of something to test during batting practice. I've been doing this for a while myself now. The idea of standing close to the batter while we perform batting practice has bothered me for a long time. My son, who is Alex Kirloff, who plays for the Minnesota Twins, when I was training him to be a hitter, I would avoid doing this. I would not stand close to him while I pitched batting practice to him. But it's very common, and I understand why it's common. If this is the only way you can perform batting practice, then you gotta roll with it. And I got a lot of ideas how to make short batting practice purposeful, and I share it with you on our online hitting courses. The test I want you to try out in batting practice revolves around the concept of hitting perception. The word perception deals with how we identify with the world around us by using our senses, our eyes, our nose, our mouth and taste, our ears, and how we associate with space. When it comes to hitting perception, it's how we use our senses to identify with the pitch. What is the speed the ball is moving at? What is the space the ball is moving into? And what is the depth the ball is passing through? Here's what I want you to test. I want you to throw batting practice from 30 feet away. Throw maybe 10 pitches. And while you're throwing 30 feet away, make notes of the hitting outcomes. At most major league ballparks, the pitcher is approximately between 30 and 35 feet. Next, I want you to move back to 40 feet away and then move back to 50 feet away. For myself, over a period of time, I performed this test. And here's what I observed. It's much easier for the hitter to respond and react to a pitch ball that is 30 feet away, 40 feet away. But when I started getting back to 45 feet, 50 feet away, now something changes. For me, when I'm doing this drill, when I incrementally move back to keep things balanced, I'm thoughtful and mindful of trying to keep more velocity on the pitch. What's changing for the batter is depth, and the hitter now has to account for the changes in depth. This is why sometimes it becomes a false reality that you're hitting good in batting practice when the pitcher's 30 feet away. It becomes a false reality that you're hitting good in batting practice when the pitcher's 30 feet away. Way. You don't have to account for the depth. And now when you move to the game, the pitcher is 60 feet away. And more than you realize it, there's actually a distortion taking place with your depth perception. Look, this is such an easy concept to understand. When you have a little kid, like little Hank, right now what you're watching, when you pitch to a little kid, you don't stand 60 feet away, 50 feet away. 40 feet away, 30 feet away. You move up 10, 15 feet away, a little underhand toss to the ball. Why? Because it's harder for a young person to accommodate the depth that the ball is passing through. Look, this is such a logical idea to account for depth. Can you imagine a pitcher practicing throwing strikes? Today, hey, instead of throwing pitches from 60 feet away, I'll move halfway up and I'll work on throwing my strikes and getting my control and my command from 30 feet away. It's just not rational. How about a basketball player? I'm gonna work on my free throws. So instead of shooting at the basket that's 10 feet high, I'm going to lower it down to like 7 feet high and try to get some consistency and maybe build my confidence. I don't think so. But traditionally, this is what hitters say. This is what reported. You know, when a pitcher's standing 20, 30 feet away, it helps my confidence. I just feel better. Look, generations ago, players used to get batting practice from real pitchers who stood on the mound 60 feet, 6 inches away. And guess what? They didn't throw batting practice. They pitched batting practice. So here's some good news. Does your team need a hitting consultant, a hitting specialist, someone who can act really teach your hitters the value of hitting perception. And check out the link in the description box and send me a direct message. Let's have a discussion how I can be an asset to your hitting program. Let me briefly tell you about our ultimate hitting event. At our ultimate hitting events, we bring in pitchers, pitchers to come in and actually pitch batting practice to our hitters. Our hitters learn these valuable concepts of hitting perception while receiving batting practice from pitchers who offer the same visual patterns hitters will see in the game. And because our pitchers will be pitching batting practice, not throwing batting practice, now I can teach the hitters about an extremely important concept called the pitcher's common denominator. The pitcher's common denominator is a signal, it's an indicator that the batter uses to prepare himself to get his eyes into position to get the data about the ball. The reason why it's so important to understand a pitcher's common denominator and get the eyes into position because this technique of using the pitcher's common denominator improves and gives the hitter an advantage of having a larger dose of hitting 
perception. If you can't attend our ultimate hitting event, consider getting our online hitting course, the best hitting drill ever, 6.0 version. Or consider making a FaceTime hitting appointment with us. And if you're in the Dallas Fort Worth area, make an appointment to come visit us at our indoor training facility in Anna, Texas. All the information you're going to need is inside the description box. Consider this. Change your mind and give Jesus Christ a try because he's waiting to bless your life. I'm Dave Kirilov with LanguageofHitting.com and the Kirilov Baseball School in Anna, Texas.